Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters, and welcome to our review of Skinamarink. Okay, yeah, this has been an interesting journey, I have to say the least. I uh, found out about this movie a couple months ago, and I neglected to tell you about it. You know, it was always something that, like, I think, uh, you know, I'm a more avid user of TikTok than you are. Uh, is Absolutely. that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I would say I don't use TikTok at all. <laughs> yeah, so between TikTok and YouTube Shorts, um, it really got a buzz when it was coming out of festivals. People were like, oh, like this is the scariest movie I've seen in years and everything. Um, which, you know, you hear that quite often uh, from stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I started to kind of look into it and I saw that this wasn't an official release. Uh, it was leaked from a, um, a festival. Uh, that's how people were able to see it and get these kind of reactions out to it. Other than the people who actually went to the festival to see it. And, uh, you know, I, had kind of thought about it, you know, I was dancing around the idea of maybe we try to find a copy and watch it. Because I didn't know really what was going on with this. If it was just going to stay one of these underground kind of films. If it was just going to be something that I walk into, a, uh, you know, a, a Walmart or something and just see a singular DVD in a couple months or what. Um, but then it got announced that it was going to be coming to Shutter, And then it was going to be getting a theatrical run. And uh, we would rather support the filmmakers. And, you know, do it the, the legal way. So we decided to wait. And tonight is the night we got to see it. Luke, you didn't see anything for this film. You didn't know anything about it. I told you to stay away from all of it. How do you feel about it? Yeah, so I went into this one completely cold. Um, you had mentioned it to me, you know, a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, this was playing at our local theater. Anyone who watches our short knows it's the nightlight. Um and uh, you picked up some tickets for it. And I was like, well, I got to get around to, you know, watching that trailer. And you kind of uh, said, no, just just go in completely cold. Just, you know, wait for that experience. It's, and it's not really knowing what this was re really about. I think maybe you gave me like a one sentence kind of little deal, uh, kind of prep a little bit. Uh, but I really didn't know too much uh, other than that. And um, I got to say, this is a very intriguing, very different uh, kind of film it's there's nothing like it out there um and very stylistic i would say um overall like just sitting with this um i think you i know this is going to be released eventually down the line on shutter but it, if this is a theatrical release near you i think you have to go to the theater to see this one um just because of being in that theater picking up the, the shot the uh the eye Video stuff as well very very unique yeah and uh you know funny enough uh there's a lot of uh odd audio uh moments in it you were kind of breaking up there i'm gonna leave it in because it sounds perfect you got a little bit of that uh that same kind of audio inflection they had in the film but uh you know it's it is different it's very different and i mean that's the kind of the word I can throw at it right now is because this is nothing like anything that I've ever seen released theatrically. Um, you know, this is something that I would probably see on like a TikTok where it's like, you know, they kind of uh, make a, a short series about these little weird analog horror shorts. Um, and it's just so interesting to kind of see uh, something like this come to the big screen. Um, and, you know, I think that this movie, um, to steal a little verbiage from Dave McRae, uh, is, and I think it's perfect for it, it, this is very much a theater of the mind movie. Um, they leave damn near everything up to interpretation for you. you. You are meant to kind of try to unravel things that you don't aren't going to get answers for. You, you are meant to kind of sit with things that is just like, if this is how I interpret the story, this is how I interpret the story. You're given bare minimum details. Normally, that would piss me off. And, uh, you know, if this was a couple of years ago, I think I would have been a lot harsher on this. But because the presentation was just so unique and I felt so sucked in to the movie at times, um, really the only time that 
I really fell out of it was because of a couple of the patrons at the theater, uh, unfortunately, that we saw it with. Um, you know, they kind of would make remarks or, you know, kind of seem like they were getting sucked out of the movie and it would suck me out because they're being obnoxious. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's like uh, this movie oddly, like just takes you in and you think that it's building towards something, but it really kind of just is this experience. And, you know, you're not going in expecting all these answers. Uh, you're just here to take the ride and uh, see what kind of trauma it leaves you with when you're done. Kind of, that's really the best way I can describe it. Yeah. It's like sitting in, into the theater here, 10 minutes into this film, it, you have to understand you're not getting a typical kind of a story here. You're not getting that a B to C. This is very much a blank canvas in a sense. And you're kind of just painting your own picture almost, I think. And I think that's what, um, Kyle Edward Ball really wanted to kind of give the audience here was um, we're kind of giving you these glimpses of horror. Uh, we're not going to give you the the full details or a full drawn out scene. It's just these these moments in time. And uh, with the crafty editing here, uh, things that appear and then disappear. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, just a lot of things that happen off screen, uh, the audio things. Um, it really does take you on that ride. And that's why it's like sitting in the theater in a dark theater here, being able to hear everything that's going on and see or not seeing other things. It takes you on that ride. And um, like we said, there's nothing out there like this. I don't even know if we're going to see something else like this um, anytime soon or, you know, years down the line, just because um, this has a unique stamp on it. This is something where, um, you know, who knows what this year is going to look like, but I, I feel like this one, when we're compiling our lists of horror, this is at least going to be in that discussion. Absolutely. I mean, because it just for its uniqueness alone, I mean, this does feel like something, you know, uh, when it directly ended, I was just kind of like, you know, you have that kind of feeling of, I, I want a little bit more uh, here. I want to interpret, I want something given to me a little bit, but you know, on my, on my drive home, uh, just really just letting it kind of wash over me and thinking it through. It's just like a lot of the imagery is really sticking with me and I feel like it will. Um, you know, one of the, the best descriptions actually came from uh, the director who uh, was on YouTube. Um, he does have uh, a lot of short films and a, a channel. Uh, so it's like you can go there and find it where he describes some of those as like uh, his interpretations of uh, childhood nightmares that he would have. And then, you know, kind of finding out that he shot this in his childhood home and, you know, there's, it, it takes place with two very young children um, dealing with things like sleepwalking and all this stuff. Like this is all stuff that happened to me when I was a kid, not the, the stuff in the film, but like, you know, like I, I would, uh, I used to sleepwalk when I was really young and, you know, I would have those kind of surrealist experiences of just like, waking up and just being like in a different part of the house and not really knowing what's going on. Uh, the most surreal for me was when I actually walked outside and thankfully my grandparents lived next to us at the time. And my parents uh, woke up, but I woke up in the middle of the driveway crying because I didn't know where the fuck I was. Um, and I just woke up to them waking me up. And it's just one of those things where it's like, they capture that really well here because it's like the thing about it is like when you have these nightmares or these dreams, uh, nothing fully connects, you know, they are flashes, they're images. Um, they are little micro stories that just kind of fill your brain. And I, I really think that this is the most accurate representation of a childhood nightmare put on film. Yeah. And, and as you're talking about childhood, you know, nightmares and everything, and that's where, you know, it's not meant to be coherent. I don't mm -hmm. think it, it's meant to be this disjointed story that are, are that's going to stick with you as like you know because we don't remember a lot of people don't remember their nightmares i mean you remember certain instances of them but as you're going throughout your day you might be um reminded of something or you may even forget it completely and i think this is kind of where um kyle edward ball is going here is just these, these kind of small elements like um i don't want to spoil anything but you know there's a there's a few in there especially as we get closer to the end that are just downright terrifying and mm -hmm. it, it's almost like uh again with the crafty editing 
things appear and then disappear and then they they reappear sometimes it's just like um it again takes you on this ride it's it's very different um it really keeps you on your toes and like looking at this film i know we covered um on splattercast um i think it was over the summer we had talked about sinister and you know those kind of uh films those super eight footage films are some of the scariest things in sinister and i kind of got those flashbacks here Mm -hmm. um not like full on but the glimmers of it you know and it's like to be able to sustain that kind of idea for an hour 40 runtime i believe um is it is a true testament to filmmaking because it, it just looking at this film from the camera angles and the the lighting choices it breaks all the rules it's it's different it's it's something where the director had a very specific ver- vision for this and he put it on film. So it's like looking at this film. Yes. It's if you're going to, if you're looking for a film that's absolutely coherent, you're not getting it with skin Marine. So, but it's like, this is something that I think if you put it on, um, you know, like I said, this is going to be on shutter, uh, eventually. And I think this will be an interesting watch at home because you can turn off all the lights and you can almost scare yourself because like you said, this is kind of theater of the mind stuff. So sitting in a dark room, just kind of sitting with all this imagery that Kyle Edward Ball is bringing to the screen, I think could be even more terrifying just sitting at home. Yeah, I would say watch this with surround sound or watch this with headphones if you can. Um, Because I think a lot of those audio cues that we got in the theater, because that's the reason uh, I wanted to go to the nightlight. Yeah. uh, Is because it is that small theater. It is a one room I think it's like what 20, 30 seats. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like you are sitting there and it's intimate. yes, it is. Um, and again, that has its drawbacks because it like I said, there were a couple people in the audience that I think were expecting something that I just fully was like, I, did you not see more the trailer? traditional horror? Maybe yeah, it's just like I don't I don't know what they thought they were getting into, but they weren't very happy with it. But it is one of those things for me where it's like I was uh I was definitely impressed with what I saw on screen. Um, And, you know, you bring up that point of just like the camera angles and everything. And, uh, you know, this movie kind of like sitting back on it now, I think I can say, interestingly enough, this film lacks humanity Uh, because you don't see any faces in this film. Uh, You, you, you never do. You, you see the perspective of a house and you see a lot of repeat imagery but you get so familiar with the repeat imagery that the horror starts to seep in when you see things change and you see things that were that were in place and that you got so used to seeing it and now it's not there or something's changed about it. And that's what unsettles you is the uncertainty and the darkness and this this kind of grainy aesthetic to not only the sound, but the the image the entire time. And uh, I, I think, yeah, it's just it's a transformative very um different kind of movie and you know honestly i compare this experience to like when the first time i saw mandy uh as to where mandy has a bit more of a a narrative flow to it uh there is still a lot of that uh imagery that just is supposed to just take you on this journey and give you more of that uh that kind of uh emotional experience and uh this is definitely involves that so i I definitely could see uh kyle edward ball and like a pablos cosmatos kind of uh you know they're on that same wavelength i feel like when it comes to their indie horror yeah and and like this is almost a how-to i think an alternate storytelling where you said Mm. their lack of humanity here there is a handful uh, of dialogue and that's really it there isn't that much uh, but the stuff that does show up is very compelling. Um, and like I said, with these instances that he kind of lingers on. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, again, not spoil anything, but there's uh, just one line of dialogue between um, the child. Uh, there's a child's voice and um, something else. And then this something else, you know, kind of saying something. And then we kind of cut to. I think it was a door with what looks like blood kind of dripping down it. And it's just like we, you almost the aftermath of uh, what this thing is commanding this, this child to do. Um, and again, that plays in your head as to, Oh my gosh, this just happened. And I think that building of tension without or very minimal dialogue and um, 
uh, you know, I, I guess minimal imagery as well. You know, it's just bare basics um, of letting you play with that. You know, it's like reading a book and, you know, the, the idea of you read the, you read the dot, dialogue on the page and then you play in your head as to what that looks like i think kyle kyle edward ball is really taking advantage of that here um you know in with this you know very 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 small budget of a film um i think he uses it to his advantage absolutely uh definitely pulling together those resources and you know just this is definitely a labor of love uh you can tell uh, like you said the man had a vision and uh, he executed it. And I think he had a good bit of creative control. It's uh, just great to see this getting picked up and his vision being put out there uh, by somebody like IFC Midnight and Shudder and uh, just making this available for people. So, you know, props to all of that. It's very cool. Um, you know, in my final thoughts here, uh, basically, because it's like I feel like uh, this would definitely be something I'd like to talk about in a longer format, maybe later on down the road on Splattercast, uh, because I think once I see this again, there will be a lot more of this uh, ability for me to take down notes and kind of try to give my interpretation of what I think is going on. Um, you know, I, I got to say that again, I said this in my short, you got to be a seasoned, uh, you know, indie film watcher you know you got to be ready for the slow and the kind of pacing you're not getting a traditional narrative here uh you got to be ready for that kind of analog horror style of just you're letting this thing take you on a journey or letting the theater of the mind guide you um in that sense if you aren't into that then i would say maybe this isn't for you uh because i think this is going to challenge you too much but if you are interested, if this does sound like something you want to experience, uh, go in open minded. And I think that you will have uh, a very, like I said, uh, images burned in your brain, very traumatizing experience by the end of this. Because some of these sequences, man, uh, one in particular, like what Luke was describing, and then another one where I'll just say there's a set of eyes and uh, it's. It's something that, you know, you're there, you're into it, and then you're just like, holy fuck. Like, I, uh, yeah, that, that, that's going to be there. When I close yeah. my eyes tonight, they'll be looking back at me. And, uh, you know, looking at this film, uh, yes, th this shows the diversity of horror. Um, like you said, maybe there are a few people in the theater this did not resonate with. Um, you know, if, if you're going into this, you know, you're a big fan of the, the the halloween stuff the scream stuff which hey to each their own uh this is not that but i highly recommend uh that you sit down you challenge yourself um and you take this in and i know dylan will kill me uh you experience uh <laughs> this film um and, and try to take away something from it because again we've talked about terrifier ter terrifier and that going to the theater and opening up um, so many different avenues for a lot of independent horror. And here's another one here at the beginning of 2023. And I think a lot of people need to experience this. I think you need to open up uh, that door of diversity when it comes to the horror genre and uh, see what a lot of these unique filmmakers have to offer, because uh, this is just a little taste here. And I think this one is going to stick with you, um, whether, you know, it's, tonight in your in your nightmares or you know it's a few weeks down the line i think this is going to be one uh that will be kind of embedded into your mind for for a little bit i grant can't agree anymore i think that's a, that's a good way to sum it up my friend but alrighty, guys it's going to wrap us up here for our review of skin and rink definitely let us know what you thought of the film if you checked it out this weekend or if you're going to check it out when it comes to shutter later this year as well as uh if you're new to the channel and you're just finding us hit that subscribe button uh we are here bringing the latest and greatest when it comes to horror content uh we did just post uh as of i guess yesterday because it's about a little past midnight when we're recording this uh our friday the 13th jarvis trilogy video that was a lot of fun to record uh luke did a bang up job on the edit i got to watch it this morning um and then you know we got our reviews for things like megan and uh, a trailer review for um, Evil Dead Rise, where we also had a lot of fun talking about that. And yeah, we got a lot of great content still to come, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. And yeah, I guess that about wraps us up. So until next time, I am Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, 
stay scared. In this house.